So the big news is, is Nikki Cardwell and I are donned in our Lycra jumpsuits. We're getting ready for a big number at the top of the next hour. She's going to whip through this and be right back. It's spectacular. Here's the news. BBC News at seven o'clock. This is Nikki Cardwell. A man staying at the Manston Migrant Processing Centre in Kent has died. He became ill while at the detention site and was taken to hospital, but died this morning. The Home Office said there was no evidence that the man had died of an infectious disease and that it took the safety of those in its care extremely seriously. The site has been criticised for overcrowding and there have been reports of diphtheria spreading there. Less than 24 hours before the World Cup kicks off, the president of FIFA has accused Western nations of hypocrisy for criticising Qatar's human rights record. Gianni Infantino said European nations should be apologising for the past acts that they've committed. Our sports correspondent Alex Capstick is in Qatar. He says Mr Infantino may have had personal reasons for his long monologue. Gianni Infantino spends a lot of time in Qatar. He virtually lives here now. He's not in Switzerland at FIFA headquarters. He's been here over the past year at least. So he's got very close to the Qatar organisers. So he is defending, I guess, people who have become his friends. The head of a Rochdale housing association which rented a flat to the family of a two-year-old boy who died from an exposure to mould has been sacked. Awab Ishak's parents had repeatedly raised the matter before he died of a respiratory condition caused by the mould, but no action was taken. Rishi Sunak has made his first visit to Kiev to meet President Zelensky. He announced more financial support for Ukraine and laid flowers at a memorial for the war dead. Our political correspondent Ione Wells says the visit caps off a difficult week for the Prime Minister. It comes days after he and the Chancellor announced tax rises, spending squeezes, defence budget and international aid budgets uh, won't be going up as planned. The government was keen to stress this week that the war in the Ukraine is to blame for the recession, inflation, slow growth in the UK. This tri- trip was clearly promoted uh, you know, as a way of sort of demonstrating that support when the reality back home uh, is something that the government's less keen to promote and talk about internationally. Reports from the UN Climate Summit in Egypt suggest delegates are close to reaching a deal to set up a fund which would help the poorest countries tackle climate change. There's still thought to be a disagreement about who should pay into the loss and damage fund. But Matthew Samuda, who's a Jamaican politician representing his country at COP, says it's badly needed. The climate has already changed. We're already at 1.1 degree of warming and with that 1.1 degree of warming we're already experiencing a particular level of misery and with that misery has come economic loss it has come death it has come despair and australia